Okay. Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Chef AJ Live. This is where great chefs cook not only vegan, but an SOS3, SOS3, SOS free <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. This is truly a Thanksgiving extravaganza. Yeah, I have brought together some of the best SOS free chefs on the planet to make you dinner. If you're on my mailing list at chefaj.com, you've already received a shopping list so that you can actually cook along with us. Our first chef is the executive chef of the True North Health Center, who actually cooks SOS free for a living every single day. His name is Chef Ramses Bravo, and he's going to be making our first course, which is a roasted kabocha squash and apple soup. Happy Thanksgiving, Ramses. Thanks for kicking off this special. Hey, thanks for having me, AJ. Hello, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope that uh, you all have a great time with your family today. Um, and I'm going to make something very simple. Uh, you guys have the recipe. Um, I'm going to talk about the ingredients as I go along. I just want to get the uh, aromatics going. So I'm going to preheat my pot here. And I'm going to turn the camera down to the, um, to the pot so you guys can see it. I was not expecting to be at work today. So excuse the mess here. Well, so are you not going to be able to have Thanksgiving with your family then? No, I will. Um, I leave here in about an hour and something. Um, but I, when I originally signed up to do this, I was not expecting to be at work. But, um, oh, well, thank you for doing it anyway, then. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I've just preheated my pots and then my aromatics are going in. I got the... Um, garlic, onions, and celery, okay, and while that cooks, I'll show you the uh, squash that I'm using, okay, so this is a uh, kabocha squash, um, you can certainly use a butternut, a red curry, this year there's a new varietal that came out, I don't know if it's new, it's new to me, uh, a tetsu kabocha squash, uh, which kind of looks a little bit like this, but more of a round where the um, kabochas are sort of flattened a bit. Uh, but the tetsu kabotos uh, are wonderful. Essentially a sweet squash to pair up with the other stuff that we're going to put in here. Okay. So basically with this guy, all I did was cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, and then, oh, sorry. I baked it upside down, okay? Uh, and basically at 350 convection until I can push on it and feel that it's soft. Um, I can't give you an exact time because these are gonna be different size. You know, like these ones are sort of a medium, slightly larger than medium, but sometimes they're smaller, larger. Um, so it's really just about being able to push on it and feel that it's soft. So if I flip it over, you see this beautiful bright orange color. So set that guy aside. So ideally you want to be able to smell this and get that nice browning effect going on. In the meantime, what I also have in the oven, I'll show you real quick. Yeah, we'll bring some out in just a second. Right. <laughs> Sorry, a patient here turned hey, don't, don't the patients know you're filming now? <laughs> just kidding. At the same time, um, you can cook this at the same time as your squash. I just did this so that it'd be perfectly ready when I um, when I do this, when I put it all together. So this was one apple that I peeled um, and diced. And so I'm baking it in the oven, you know, same thing that I peeled so that I have these sort of brown little bits of apple to go with the soup. Put that back in. And what I'm chasing here is that nice browning on that pot. Now, once I have a good browning, I'm going to uh, essentially deglaze, uh, which is a uh, 
traditional cooking term. Uh, it's essentially once you ground up at the bottom of your pot uh, and you know that browning is on the pot, you want to get it off so it comes into your dish. Okay, so that term the glazing. Uh, it's used widely when you're like cooking something, browning something in a pot and you can deglaze with like wine. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to deglaze with some um, applesauce because this is a uh, squash and apple soup. And because this is an SOS3 recipe, I look for ways um, to infuse as much flavor into the recipe. And so I'm going to be using some fresh apples here as well. Uh, so that's one layer of apple, but I'm also going to do another layer of apple with the applesauce. So I'm just about ready. We've got about 30 seconds or so. Are you, if, are if you, you don't mind, I'm going to take 15 seconds to pass this off to my uh, patient here at True North who needs it. So I'll be gone for about 15 seconds. Okay, I will talk to everybody. How is everybody? Is anybody cooking along with us or making any of these recipes for Thanksgiving? We have a great lineup. We have five more chefs coming up. Everything from soup to nuts, literally, literally, is that <coughs> going to go? I'm wondering what he's making for the patients at True North today, if they're eating, because as you know, it's a fasting center. Okay. Yeah, are you making anything special for the patients at True North today? Oh yeah, give me a second and I'll tell you what the menu is. So now I got this nice browning happening here. Then I go ahead and add my applesauce. Okay, and then I'll show you real quick. I haven't gotten it all, but once you deglaze, you pick up a lot of that browning that happened, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and scoop my squash into the soup. And I'm pretty sure I, I wrote it on the recipe, you know, the, the baking of the, the squash can be done certainly a couple days ahead of time, even like three days ahead of time, because it's much easier to make a soup when you don't have to wait for the squash to, to cook on the spot. Yeah, why not batch cook your starches? Well, probably not good right there. Get a quick wipe in the hands. And so in order to help this move along, break it up a little bit, I have here some broth that was um, it's boiling and I turned it off right before the show started just so that we can speed this up because I know I only have about 15 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20. Sure. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I didn't even button up my <laughs> jacket. I have to change real quick to from the show. <laughs> you can see how well put together I am today. Well, you didn't know you were coming in, so. Okay. Um, so while this cooks, I'm going to check my apples here real quick again. Now they're fine. Uh, yeah, so really quick for True North here, we are doing uh, lasagna. We're doing um, wild rice stuffed uh, acorn squash. We are doing a root vegetable gratin, which is sort of like a scallop potatoes. Uh, we're using uh, yams, sweet potatoes, and potatoes with like a creamy thyme sauce. Uh, we're doing a uh, apple curry soup and a little bit of uh, steamed vegetables just to <laughs> level it off. Well, that sounds amazing. How many patients are actually eating? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but usually on Thanksgiving, people just sort of appear. So we always make sure to have plenty of food because people just appear. Uh, and we cook for the uh, patients and the staff as well. So you, know, you never know. Plus it's Thanksgiving, you know, the whole, it, it's healthy, but we can at least stuff ourselves silly, just like, you know, regular people do. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay. So now 
as this comes up to a center, I'm going to get my apples ready to go. I'm going to explain this to you a little bit. So these, if you have a chance, I don't know, you know, where you guys are. I discovered these a couple of years ago. These are called sugar bee apples. Uh, and you see a little bee on the sticker there. These are the most delicious apples that I have ever eaten. Um, expensive, but totally worth it. They are like this perfect balance of sweet and sour. So they're not necessarily like Granny Smith sour kind of thing, but they're not like a red delicious either. It, they're just like perfectly, perfectly tart, uh, which is gonna help here. So the idea is that I have something really sweet here in the um, squash, plus I added some applesauce, which brings in a little bit more sweetness. And now I'm going to add some tartness to it, okay? So it's the sort of a sweet and sour kind of play that, I, that I'm doing here. While this cooks, go ahead and peel these bad boys. This does not need to cook for very long. Um, forget what the recipe calls for, but somewhere in the five to 10 minute simmer, that's really all you need. However, just like with any soups, what's really the best thing to do is to make them a day ahead in advance, at least. And then that 24 hours uh, of just sort of sitting there gives any soup or any like stew really a much better flavor. So if you make this today and there's some left over, have it tomorrow because you'll notice a difference. for the fresh apples and other apples will work certainly you know just because i use sugar bee apples does not mean that a pink lady or a granny smith or a fuji or gala won't work um, sugar app sugar bee apples just happen to be so freaking delicious that you know if you're not aware of them just letting you know so that you're like oh sugar bee apples i'm gonna give it a try chef bravo said they're delicious So for the sake of time, I'm just going to let this simmer for another minute or so while I explain um, another one of my ingredients. Uh, so the soup goes for some ginger as well. Now, the reason I don't cook the ginger in with the other aromatics, the onions and the garlic and celery, is because you it kind of loses its power. Um, you kind of cook it away, so to speak. So I always like to use it... Um, special in the soup at the very end. And I don't want the soup to taste like ginger, not this particular soup at least. I just wanted to, I just want to give it a, a little hint of sort of this secret ingredient, which gives the whole thing balance. Um, because again, we got, you know, a predominantly sweet kind of flavor going on with the soup. So if I add some tartness with the apples and then just a hint of spice, that people may or may not sort of perceive. Um, that's all I need. It's just the ginger itself is there for just a little bit of balance. That's all. Okay. People are asking if those apples are also good for eating or just for cooking. Oh yeah, no, they're delicious for eating. They're just amazing, amazing apples. Um, Have you ever had the envy apple? A what? The Envy apple. That's my favorite. It's called Envy. E -N -V. Oh, yeah. I've had Envy. Um, they're pretty good. I like piñatas. I, I don't know if you've had a piñata before, though. That's pretty good. Not as good as this one, but... And uh, Marilyn wants to know, how do you roast asparagus without using oil? Uh, you throw it in the oven <laughs> without oil. <laughs> Or in the air fryer, yeah. You really, it's really. You, you find because you know you're also teaching cooking at True North, and you have those wonderful cooking classes. If you want to tell people about them, that the, the hardest thing for people to wrap their head around is the no sugar, the no oil, or the no salt. Yeah, I at least once a week, at least 
somebody asked, you know, how do I cook without oil? How do I roast something without oil? And I just say, well, you just do it the way you've always done it, just without the oil. You know, put the stuff in the oven and let it, you know, high enough heat and it'll roast and it'll brown and there you go. Okay. So my apples are in there. I don't cook them necessarily. So the residual heat will cook them a little bit. But what I want to do is keep as much of that fresh apple flavor as possible. So if I add them in the beginning, again, with the aromatics, you know, you, I still have the apple flavor, but I, I lose that sort of fresh bite of a crisp apple kind of thing. All right. So my apples go in, my ginger goes in. Check on my garnish here real quick. I gotta get out of the oven. And, oh, I'll show you. So I get, you see how these nice, beautiful little bits of roasted apple came out? Mm. Okay, and now this is ready. So, you know, this is a very, very simple recipe. Once I have it here, um, obviously because I'm doing it for the show, I didn't let it cook quite long enough. But this would, as is, it would turn out pretty darn good. So now at this point, I take it to the blender. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Vitamix. Um, ideally, if you have a you know high speed blender, that's always best because it, it gives you a really nice silky smooth soup. Look at that! Perfect amounts. Like I've done this before. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend it, and then plate it for you, and then you'll see it. What are you making something special for your family's Thanksgiving dinner? Oh, doesn't hear me. Okay. Did you have a question, Agent? Yeah, I was wondering if you're making anything special for your own family's Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, we're meeting at my sister's house, um, and I was asked to do um, a coleslaw and some mashed potatoes, which, since I came to work, you know, they're right here. <laughs> so that's my contribution, and then I don't know what else they're making. So <clears throat> this guy is from my Bravo Express, the roasted garlic mashed potatoes. I forget what page number it is, but. That's interesting that they wanted coleslaw on Thanksgiving. I don't think of that as traditional. Uh, you know what happened is um, the other day I was at my mom's house and they wanted a salad and they were like, Here, make a salad. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I just went through my mother's fridge and I grabbed what few ingredients I had, that she had, so I did this finely shredded um, cabbage. Uh, and then my girlfriend and I had just bought a uh, sort of cool zester. So I did, I zested some uh, carrots and apples into it. And it was like really, really fine, almost like uh, mashing them kind of. Uh, then I threw some lemon juice and a little pepper and boom, that was it. I did a, a little salt for my family because they're not completely salt free. but. And they loved it so much. They're like, oh, make that for Thanksgiving, okay? Oh, that's great. Well, now you have a new recipe for your next book or course. Yeah. Okay. So, here we go. See, I can smell the, the fresh apple and the, um, and the ginger. Okay. And then a little bit of apple garnish. And if you happen to have it, um, I'm also gonna do a little bit of sage. Sage and apples go really, really well together. So it gives me a little bit of green to go in there to just give me a little bit of uh, uh, color pop. 
and that's about it. You go. Wow. Very simple recipe, uh, but again, with the just a few ingredients, but just the contrast between the main flavors, this turns out to be a really, really good recipe. Oh my God, thank you. That looks so delicious. All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and to everybody at True North. Okay, same to you, AJ. Thanks for having me. Well, always. And so, you know, we're getting ready for Shada, who is our next uh, guest to log on. Just give us some tips about salt. That is the hardest thing, Ramses, for everybody. The oil is oil's easy, really, and so is the sugar. But man, people struggle with the salt, don't they? Yeah, that's the hardest one. For me, the sugar was the easiest. Um, but then um, the less you cook with oil, the less need for salt that you have. Um, cause the flavor can, you know, register into your taste buds much easier. But I always tell people, it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is going to take a couple of weeks at least so that your taste buds readjust to the level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if the goal is to go SOS free, then you can cook SOS. And then to start with, you can have salt at the table and just season it to, you know, a level that you're like, Oh, okay, this is good. And just gradually, you know, wean yourself off of it, which again, yeah. if cooking without oil, it, it, it's easy or easier as you go along. You ever see patients sneak salt in? Yeah, but I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Ramses. I hope to see you soon and happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving, AJ. Bye-bye. Hi, Shade. I hope you do great. Happy Hi, Ramses. How are you? Good, Remy. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good, thank you. All right, what you making? Oh, I'm gonna make a harvest salad with a pomegranate orange salad dressing today. Mm, sounds good. Save me some. Absolutely. Okay, bye, hon. Bye. bye. Hey, bye. Shea, that, that's a beautiful tablecloth and setting you have. Thank you, thank you. So how are you doing, AJ? But happy Thanksgiving. You're wearing your signature color, red. Of course. Nice. Happy well, Thanksgiving to you as well. Think, and what are you going to make for your whole Thanksgiving dinner? I know you're going to make a wild rice harvest salad with a pomegranate orange dressing for us. What else are you going to make for your family's meal? Um, well, I'm making a sweet potato casserole. Mm. And then I'm going to be making um, a, a quinoa fava bean. Um, well, it's a take on a Persian recipe. So, you know, we always have to have something... Middle Eastern at the table, we're having that. And then I'm going to be making a butternut curry soup. And Yum. Then, yeah, and then for dessert, we're having fresh fruit and ice cream. Oh, my God. You're, and you're doing all the cooking? I'm doing all the cooking. It's, oh my you know what? If you, if you prep ahead of time, like I did, I prepped for all this ahead of time, it makes it easy. So you don't have to, like, sit there on the day of and do so much work. So it's, it's, you just have to make sure you plan it out. And it's, it's not, our food is not hard to do. I don't think it is. Nope. So. I can't wait to see how you put this together. I love wild rice. It's so uh, toothsome. It's toothsome. It's got a nutty flavor and it's just, I really enjoy it. And the salad really is so easy and versatile. It's like having a fall plate in your mouth. I mean, it's just delicious and you can customize it to however you want. So the wild rice, I went ahead and I made that last night and you can make that in your instant pot, super easy. And we start with two heads of romaine lettuce that I've already chopped up and ready to go. Now, if you don't like romaine, you can do other other greens, but this happens to be um, my mom's favorite. So it's Thanksgiving and to say thanks to the family, I'm gonna try to make it the way they like it. So I've got the romaine lettuce in here, and then I'm gonna take the wild rice that I've already made, and I'm gonna put, you know, some in there. And the measurements that I've given to people, honestly, is just for, I don't know, it's just for like a a roadmap for you guys. You can add as much wild rice as you want, as less as you want. You don't have to follow The beauty of a salad is you don't have to follow it exactly the recipe to an exact T. You want to put more rice, you put more rice. You want to put more pomegranates, which you know I do, and you do. So 
go ahead and add what you want in here. And then I've also went ahead and I took sweet potatoes and I cubed them and I made them in the oven. And we're gonna add that to the salad. So we're gonna start building this salad up with different colors and different textures. And that's what's really nice about it. Um, then we're gonna add some, of course, we're gonna have to have more greens in here. So we're gonna add some celery in here, chopped celery. I'm also going to add some chopped green apples. Now I know you like envy apples and you're more than welcome to put envy apples in here or gala or whatever apples you like, but I like things on the sour side. So I went ahead and I, I'm going to do the green apples. And when you chop the apples ahead of time, make sure you pour some lemon juice or something acidic on top because it's going to oxidize and you don't want your apples to turn brown. So we're going to put that in here. And I think I need a bigger bowl. I always miscalculate. My, my salad seems to grow all the time. And I seem to miscalculate, you know, the amount of space that I have, but it's, it'll be fine. And of course, we're going to put the jewel on top. And you know, the jewel is the pomegranates. And if you all know me, I love pomegranates. So, and I just think it makes the salad look so pretty. So, so pretty. And if you don't want to, I did a whole video showing you guys how to deceive a pomegranate. But if you're, if you still are intimidated by it, I know I've seen it at Trader Joe's and I've seen it at Costco where they sell the Ariels all by itself. So they've done the work for you where you don't have to do anything. So it makes it, it's a little bit more expensive, but if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. And then we're gonna add some uh, parsley, flat parsley to this. Now you can add cilantro if you like, but I really like the, uh, the flat parsley. And the other thing that we're gonna add to this, and this is completely optional, is like two tablespoons of raw pumpkin seeds. You don't by any means have to add this. this it just gives it a little crunch. Um, and I thought, you know, it's the holidays. They can, you know, they can have it if they like. So we're just gonna add literally like two tablespoons. And that's really it for the salad dressing, or the salad, I keep calling it salad dressing, but look how colorful that is. And, beautiful. huh? It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And I honestly, you know, every table needs to have a salad because this isn't your ordinary salad. It's got so much flavor and textures and colors and everything in there that this, in the reality for you and me, AJ, this could be our, our meal. I mean, there's like everything in here. So is there any questions on the salad? Well, there's a question from Jennifer. How can I find the video that teaches you how to get a pomegranate out? So I posted it on your website. It's on my website. Your yes, website is posted in the show notes. Yep, at Healthy Cooking with Shada. That's it. So we're going to move on to um, the salad dressing. Now, to make life easier in the kitchen for myself, I have a lemon tree and we have pomegranate tree. I always take the lemons and that I get, or even if I buy them, I juice them ahead of time and I keep them in the refrigerator. So I keep it in this glass bottle. Don't throw your glass bottles out, keep them because they come in handy for when you want to pour your um, lemon juice, lime juice, whatever you want. So I always have these fresh in the refrigerator. I always juice my um, oranges and have them fresh, ready to go. So in case I want to make a quick dressing like today, I have everything ready to go. Now for the pomegranate molasses, this is the brand that I used and you can go to my Amazon page and it's in there and it's by Al Wadi and it's pomegranate molasses. You have to be careful buying this in the Middle Eastern stores. In the Middle Eastern stores, they sell a lot of pomegranate molasses and they're not bad, but they add sugar to it. This is the only brand that I have found that does not add sugar to it. And I know AJ, you found this actually in a store somewhere and I can't remember. Yeah, in Westmoreland, California on the way to Mexico from <laughs> India. Crazy, huh? That is crazy. Cause I personally have never seen this in the store. When you called me and you said you found it, that was really exciting, but at least I know they have it on Amazon and I can always get it there. And, um, in the Middle Eastern cooking, we use a lot of pomegranate molasses. There's a lot of dishes. Uh, one of yours that you love is horish de which I literally 
this whole bottle goes in there. Um, so if where are you going to use the whole bottle? We don't want a molasses that's already added sugar to it. So this is a lot cleaner and it's a lot healthier for us. Um, now this recipe for today, you can make this with, I'm going to use a half a cup of cashews, raw cashews, but you can certainly make this with cannellini beans. And it, with the cannellini beans, it's just not going to be as thick and creamy, but the taste is definitely there and it's absolutely delicious. Now, what goes in here is the lime juice, the orange juice, and the pomegranate molasses. I've gone ahead and mixed everything because I know we're, we're short on time today and we're gonna pour all that in here. Let me get the rest of the molasses out because it has a tendency to sit on the bottom sometimes. And for this dressing, I'm using my Tribest. And I love this machine, this little Tribest that you can get on Amazon. It's on my Amazon page. Um, I love it because it's just a little container and I just want to make something small for the dressing. I don't want to use my Vitamix and dirty up a big dish. We're going to use a small shallot in here. And then we're going to also add a little bit of water. Now, there's two ways. You can start, if I were you guys, I'd start with a quarter cup of water and mix it and see. And you have to mix it really well because you want the cashews to really blend up. And depending on how thin or thick you like your dressing, that's where I put in the recipe a quarter to a half a cup. So you need, you need to be the judge of that to see how you like it. So we're gonna start with a quarter of a cup and then we'll work our way up and see if we wanna do more. Any questions so far? Oh, sorry, let me look, I was watching you. Uh, well, well, comment Mona says, I wish I made this salad instead of the one I made for dinner today. Suzanne has never heard of pomegranate molasses. It's kind of like, like a, a reduced balsamic in a way. It, it is, uh, but instead it's just uh, pomegranates that they've reduced. So let me get this out of the way. You know, I you're actually, right. It, it is so much more expensive to buy the pomegranates already seeded. It is, but it's so easy. You just have to have patience. It's so easy to de-seed these. Um, I personally, find it very therapeutic to stand above the sink and just to take the pomegranates and deceive them and, and do it. So I, I, don't, I enjoy it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and blend this up. Sorry about the noise. So this will thicken up a little bit as it sits in the refrigerator. But I'm not going to put, because we're not eating tonight till four. So I'm not gonna pour the salad dressing, but you can see that it is a little creamy and it'll get even creamier as it sits. And oh my God, it's so good. If you like something sweet and tangy, this is the salad dressing. And how easy was that to make? With ingredients that you have on hand. And like I said, you can make it with less fat and do it with a cannellini beans. And it's, there's no problem. The taste will still be there. It's just a matter of the creaminess. And you can add, all, you can always add just a little bit more beans to it just to make it a little bit creamier. But either way, it's absolutely delicious. But like I said, because we're not, I'm not serving this right away. I'm gonna hold off and putting the salad dressing. And I, and I recommend you do the same thing. Um, because the, the, the salad will get soggy. Now, I personally, I like it. I, it doesn't bother me, but when you're having company over, they may not like it. So always wait to dress your salad right before you're ready to serve it. Keep this in the refrigerator. And this, is, this machine is great because I can close the lid back up and I can literally just keep it in this, put it in the refrigerator, 
if I want to give it an, an extra zap before I serve it, then I can do that as well. And that's really about it. I mean, this is really a quick salad and dressing. And like I said, if you prep ahead of time, it, it's going to save so much time for you guys. So much time. Right. And I'm guessing you don't dress it until you eat it, right? I don't. I'm when I, tonight at four when my my mom's uh, sisters are coming over tonight. So uh, right before I'm ready to serve dinner, I will dress it, and um, and then that's that's when we'll we'll pour it on there. Yep, yeah, absolutely. That's great. There's a question from Chana or Shana. I'm not sure. It's can you use Ceylon, S-I-L-A-N? I guess that's a brand. If you can't get the molasses you showed. Ceylon. I've never heard of that brand for uh, the pomegranate molasses. Yes, just make sure you read the ingredients. All you want it to say is that it has pomegranate. It's like the only ingredient in this one is pomegranates, and that's it. But, uh, you know, I don't have the, the one that we buy from the Middle Eastern store. There's one in the Middle Eastern store that I used to buy before I learned about this one. It was by Cortez. And the reason I liked Cortez was because it was a little bit more on the sour side than the other brands, because the other brands were really, really sweet. Uh, but then when I learned that it has sugar in there, I stopped buying it. And um, AJ can attest to the fact that this is just 100% pomegranate juice that they've reduced. There's nothing else added to it, and that's what you want. So if you want to buy a different brand, by all means, just make sure that the only ingredient that's in there is pomegranate. You can actually probably reduce this yourself just like you would uh, balsamic vinegar, like if you take your pomegranate juice and all that, but I'm sorry, that's just a little too much work and I've got too much on my plate. So <laughs> it's a lot easier for me just to uh, just to buy it and, and use it up. Ain't nobody got time for that, for sure. <laughs> Uh, Mona says, how long will the undressed salad last in the refrigerator? It will last for a couple of days because, again, there's nothing in here that's, that's wet. So it'll, it'll be fine. And it'll Babette fine. wants to know what, what the name of the machine is. I guess she means the blender. Yes, try best. T-R-I-B-E-S-T. -E and it's on my Amazon uh, page. Uh, it's in there. And, it's, and it comes with um, this size of a container and it comes with one smaller and it's really perfect. I, I absolutely, this was one of the best things that I ever bought. Um, I've had it now for probably about eight or nine years. And just when you wanna make something small, cause like I said, I have the Vitamix, but I don't wanna dirty up the whole blender just for a little salad dressing that I wanna make on the go. So for me, this is perfect. If you have a neutral bullet, I'm, guess, I'm guessing that's about the same thing, right? I guess, that's very yeah. cool. Uh, Shana says that Ceylon is date syrup. It's date syrup. Oh, no, 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 you don't want date syrup. You want the, uh, you want the pomegranate molasses because two different, two different tastes. No. Nice. It, it, they don't, in, we're, in your country of origin, they don't celebrate American Thanksgiving, right? So it would, this wouldn't, there wouldn't be any traditional Thanksgiving Persian dishes then? No. And in fact, when, uh, when my grandparents were alive, you know, I always cooked Thanksgiving. We always had probably about 25 to 30 people. We would have the turkey just because that was like the American thing to do. But the rest of the meal was all Persian food. All of it was Persian food, except for the turkey that, that was there, um, yeah, in Iran, we don't, we don't have it. So every day we should be thankful. I, you know, I think it's kind of ridiculous that we have one holiday just to be grateful and to give thanks where I personally think that should be done 365 days of the year. We should always be grateful and we should always be thankful because you honestly, you don't know what tomorrow or the next minute is going to bring. You just don't. Well said. So it's kind of like in, in, in there's what Yom Kippur, one day to be forgiven. <laughs> right. And, and really, that should be like almost every day. Like, you know, why right. is it the one day that we ask for forgiveness? Nice. So, so if people want to, before we bring on Vicki, which I'll, I'll let her into the broadcast studio now, if people want more Shada, follow you. How often do you go live? Where do you prefer to do things? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube? So on Instagram, uh, you can follow me under Shada June 
32. And the reason I had to change my name, it used to be Healthy Cooking with Shada, but um, they stole my Instagram and there was a whole fiasco with that. And I was able to get my page back, but I was not able to get my name back. And so I had to change the name. Everything else, Facebook and YouTube is under Healthy Cooking with Shada. My website is also healthycookingwithshada.com. You can follow me there. I try to go live at least once a week or maybe once or twice a month. I, I've got a lot on my plate right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and I'm busy with my book. Uh, the book's coming along. So I'm excited about my my my. Uh, my cooking channel and my book and everything. So there's a lot going on right now. So right now I can only go maybe twice a month, but you know, you can always reach out to me. You can always email me. You can always find me on Facebook or on my website. Are you able to tell us the name of your book and when it will be out? We're the, well, we're hoping the book will come out sometime early next year. Um, but the name of the book, we're still, it's between three names. So we're still working on it. Um, so as soon as, <laughs> As soon as uh, it's ready, I will definitely let you know, AJ, because uh, you're going to be writing the forward to I it. No, I got I got to see it first to know exactly what to I write. Know. Maybe, maybe you can send me the three prospective titles. Okay, uh, we'll send them to you, and uh, I'm sure Glenn will be in touch with you. So as soon as we get the book uh, ready to go, so you can uh, read it, and and hopefully we'll get your approval on it. Oh, you will for sure. Well, thank you, Shada, June, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you, AJ June, and happy Thanksgiving to you and to Charles and to all of the audience that's uh, watching us today. Thanks again, AJ. Oh, thank you for the beautiful presentation. Well, next we have our entree for our Thanksgiving extravaganza, SOS Free Cook Along. This chef is not new to Chef AJ Live, but this she may be new to the multi-chef experience. Her name is Vicki Bredgock. She has a fabulous book that came out earlier this year, and she's going to be making a frosted lentil loaf. Please welcome from Ann Arbor Vegan Kitchen, where it's probably freezing now, I'm guessing. Vicki, hey, Vicki, how are you and how cold is it where you are? It's a beautiful sunny day actually in about the 40s. So cold for you, but for us it's a lovely Thanksgiving day. So so nice to be with you. Shada, that salad looked wonderful by the way. And um, yeah, I'm so nice to, you. nice to see you here. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited to be sharing with you the holiday lentil loaf that I'm making, which is going to be frosted with mashed potatoes. And that's going to be our Thanksgiving entree today. Um, and so what we are starting with, I like to get the mashed potatoes started first. And um, so what I'm doing, uh, what I have done already actually to get us going is to take the, um, say, I'm using five pounds of Yukon gold potatoes. You could use red skinned or a different kind of That's potato so if you wanted to. And um, then I take all of them and peel them and put them into the pressure cooker. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can just cook it on the stove, um, kind of, you know, the traditional way. I would, in that case, probably chop them into chunks, cover them with water, bring them to a boil, simmer, cover it until they're tender. But this very nice, easy hands-off way is once we peel them, I stick them into a pressure cooker and um, I put in two cups of water and I bring it to high pressure for 20 minutes. That's the whole potato without any cutting involved other than you know maybe trimming to make sure it's nice and clean looking. Um, and then bring it to high pressure for 20 minutes. And after that, we just open it up and turn it into a mashed potato, which I'll show you what I do for that in just a moment. So while the potatoes are cooking, I just wanna mention that I find if you use a potato that's about three inches by two and a half, not that you need to get your ruler out, but if they're about that size, and not bigger, they'll all cook in about the same amount of time, be nice and tender. Um, if they're a little bit bigger than that, I just chop them in half so that the pieces are, nothing's bigger than about three inches. So, um, okay, we've got our potatoes cooking and we'll mash them in just a moment and now we'll get started on our lentil loaf. So here's what we do. Um, we are going to take, first, we're gonna take some vegetables and saute them, and which I have done, of course, without oil. And I've got in here one large sweet onion, a Vidalia onion or something similar to that with a, a red pepper for color. You could use green or yellow if you wanted or something else um, and some garlic and some celery. And then I've added some greens. 
So we're starting just with the, of course, water only as my sauteing method, no oil. And um, I'm actually using, besides the onions and the, the pepper and the celery, which gives it a nice flavor and crunch, and then the garlic at the end, once that's nicely sauteed and kind of golden, I'm adding about two cups of a green. I, my recipe says um, fresh um, baby spinach or else power greens, but today I use something similar just called super greens, which is just, you know, I love to use these mixtures. This one has Swiss chard in it as well as arugula and spinach. So it's a great combination of tender greens and it makes just delicious flavor. So I have gone ahead and sauteed all these vegetables so they're ready to add to my mixture. And then into a large bowl, I'm gonna actually stick these gloves on because this part can be messy if you're doing this with your hands, which I find is the most effective way to get this all mixed up. Into a large bowl together, I am going to add our lentils. And I have just bought Trader Joe's cooked lentils. You could cook your own from scratch for this. I know, why um, bother though when they already make them, huh? They're, yeah, I, I'm all for a simple ingredient that's prepped for me if it's nice and fresh like this and nice and clean and nothing else added. So yeah, so I'm using this, um, these lentils. I'm adding to that three cups of oats, rolled oats, and then two uh, cups of sweet potatoes, which I have cooked ahead and just kind of smooshed up here, you know, mashed up just enough to get them to be measured. So I'm adding this all together and hands, you know, you can use a spoon if you want a wooden spoon. I kind of get it started with that a lot of times, but going right in for mixing with my hands really kind of gets the job done. So this is the, the part that will maybe take the longest in a way, which is just kind of getting all this combination of ingredients mixed together. And it really smells good already, just the sweet potatoes and the lentils. And now to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add my vegetables. So these are cool enough to add now. So we'll mix in all this delicious extra flavor and nutrition. What time is your thing for dinner for your family? Five o'clock. Nice. So a little bit later, yeah. So now I'm gonna add my seasonings and we've got some smoked paprika and some cumin and turmeric and some black pepper. And now we're just gonna really get in here and mix and mix and mix until everything feels like it's nicely combined. All this delicious flavor, texture, color, and we're gonna turn this into our pans. And you've got a couple of choices here. You can just use a standard loaf pan covered with parchment paper so that it's easy to get back out. I'm using a silicone loaf pan. It's actually two loaf pans we're gonna use. So it makes plenty for an entree like this. It's gonna be 12 servings. Or in fact, more, it could be more depending on how you cut it. But we're gonna put two loaf pans together here. You'll see what we're doing. Or if you want to, you can even use like little mini, you know, muffin cups or mini loaves, whatever works for you. And this freezes too. So you can make all of this, bake it, and then um, go ahead and freeze it after it's cooked. So it's nicely mixed, pretty good, pretty well, I think. And so now we're just going to take this mixture, this batter, if you will, and put it into these loaf pans which are just these silicone loaf pans. I just get them on Amazon. They're made by Trudeau. You can find them by different brands. Do you freeze it before or after cooking? I do it after. I find that it works better to, uh, I'm sure, you know, I haven't tried it the other way, I should say, but I freeze it after I've cooked it. And then it's just easy to warm up. It's all ready to enjoy. And, you know, there's really nothing in here that, um, I mean, oats are really the only thing that isn't cooked. So all of these ingredients are really nicely um, prepped already, except that by baking it, we're going to get everything nice and crispy. And that is just the best part of this. And Chef AJ, you and I have talked about this before, but if you're having leftovers, this is the kind of thing you might want to air fry when you 
have them the next day and turn it extra crispy. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, Gina says, well, why doesn't she use a food processor to mix everything? You certainly could. Um, it, what I'm having happen here by not using a food processor is that I've got the texture of everything pretty chunky. And that would be just kind of how, whatever you like, you could certainly try using a food processor. No reason why that wouldn't work, but it would give it more of a homogenized texture. And I like this kind of confetti texture that we've got right now, where you can see the oats and the lentils and all of the vegetables, just like that. So we have everything all in our pan and it's ready for the next step, which is a glaze. So now we're going to get our flavorful glaze that we're going to create very, very simply with just some yellow mustard and some barbecue sauce. So let's see here. I'm going to just put um, two tablespoons or so of yellow mustard and about double that of the barbecue sauce. My family really likes this part of it. So I've actually added a little extra today. So we're just gonna put this on top and stick it into the oven. So I'm just mixing together this very extremely easy glaze of mustard and barbecue sauce. I like the date lady barbecue sauce because there's no sugar in it, but you can use any kind that you like. And you can be as careful as you like with this step. I'm just going to make sure we're kind of evenly spreading our sauce between the two, covering it up nicely. And I might have just a little bit more on one than the other, but they're pretty good. So now we've got these all ready to stick into the oven. Our two loaves covered with our sauce. They're gonna go into a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. So once that happens, we take them out of the oven and we frost them with our mashed potatoes. So they're getting kind of a head start on baking. I've actually frosted, I've actually made, here, let me just move this to get our base here. We've, I've actually mashed these potatoes ahead of time. We've got just these fluffy mashed potatoes just made with soy milk and I added a little bit of onion powder and a little bit of black pepper. So they're really simple. You could make them a little bit, um, you know, could add garlic to it or roasted garlic, which would also be delicious or any kind of herb you like. You, I've been asked, could you use sweet potatoes? You certainly could, but we're using sweet potatoes inside. So by adding the white potatoes on the outside, it's kind of like a full meal where we've got lots of things already in there, including our greens. So now these are ready to take to the next step. After these come out of the oven and have baked for 20 minutes, we top them with our mashed potatoes and we spread it on the top as much or as little as you like and stick them back into the oven for another 35 to 40 minutes if they're this size loaf pan. And if they're the smaller ones like this for another 15 to 20 minutes. And this is what they look like frosted coming straight out of the oven. And I've got 12 of them because I've got two of these loaf pans. So mm -hmm. we've got plenty for everybody. How many people are just, coming to, how many people are coming to your dinner? We've got 10 actually coming. So um, we've got plenty for everybody. And what's fun about these loaf pans because they're silicone is that they come right out of the pan. I'm actually going to use a larger, I would use a larger um, platter if I'm adding all of these small ones to it. But tonight we'll be using these large loaves. But here we are, frosted, are frosted with mashed potatoes, holiday lentil loaves. Man, all you, ready did, to go. you did that so fast. <laughs> you know, I really like to prep the potatoes ahead of time. Um, I did mash these up just right before we came on this morning, but I actually peeled them the night before. So I peeled them last night and had them covered with water. I had a couple of clients asking me about this because I do, and I know everyone's saying this today, but the more you can get done ahead of time, the better 
the more smoothly things can go because especially if you're making multiple dishes like I am today, you want to kind of have lots of things meased ready to go so that you can kind of prep it all together at the end. So yeah, if you can kind of get your potatoes mashed ahead of time, peeled ahead of time, ahead of that, it makes your assembly nice and easy as things go into the oven. So that's it. Everything's ready for enjoying. Well, what else are you going to have at your dinner tonight? So we're also going to have some um, roasted Brussels sprouts that I'm going to add some dried cranberries and pistachios um, to the Brussels sprouts with a little bit of a glaze of a balsamic vinegar. And I found some dried cranberries that have no sugar, which I love. And so they're nice and tart and there's no sugar, no oil. Um, and that's kind of hard to find cranberries like that, but that's one of our side dishes as well as butternut squash with onions that I'll be roasting in the oven. And we'll have a big salad with ranch dressing and a mushroom gravy in case anyone wants to put gravy over their loaves. And, um, and then for dessert, we're having a pumpkin spice chocolate truffle. Oh my God. Homemade vanilla ice cream with oh cranberry God. sauce that I made on your show last year. Oh uh, fresh cranberry sauce to top over the, the ice cream. So yeah. That's our, that's our dinner. That sounds incredible. You know, if people didn't see last year, you did a two-part episode where you made Christmas dinner and made new recipes from everything. People should really check that out for inspiration and ideas for holiday or everyday recipes. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was lots of fun to do with you. Yeah. Thank Here's you a for question. Having- oh, it was great. She, Mona says, do the loaves stay together or are they crumbly when you cut them? No, they really stay together. You can see how they come right out of the, that's part of what's so lovely about this. They're nice and solid, like meatloaf, traditional meatloaf is. So that's really a nice aspect of, um, you know, combining these, all these different starches. And Chef AJ, you inspired me. I love your sweet potato burgers. And those inspired kind of a mashup of your burgers along with my old shepherd's pie kind of combining some flavors and textures but the solid loaf makes it really fun for being able to you know slice into sandwiches the next day or air fry into a uh, little smaller bites later on and so forth but yeah they do stay together nicely yeah pam says the loaf looks amazing yeah and it'd be so fun to just stick it under the air fryer if you have leftovers Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we probably will because we'll have, I'm going to have double my normal amount today. <laughs> right. uh, Terry says, yikes, I put too much hickory balsamic vinegar in my greens. Any suggestions? Add more greens. Add more greens. Yeah. <laughs> By any chance you have your book nearby to show people? I do. Thank you. Yeah. And Chef AJ, your testimonial is on the back of my book. And thank you so much for that. I love that. It's just beautiful. So this is my book, which came out about six months ago called The Plant-Based for Life Cookbook. And um, I'm very excited about it. And thank you for for your testimonial on the back. Oh, great. If people want more, Vicki, where can they find you? They can find me at annarborvegankitchen.com, which is my blog and my website. And lots more information about my coaching services. You can find my book there. And um, if you have any questions, of course, reach out anytime. Oh, my God. Well, thank you so much. You know what would make a perfect accompaniment to what you're making? Our next guest, Faith Scott and the Scott family from Get to the Root, they're going to make a a stuffing. Definitely. That will be perfect. The perfect addition. This, I mean, this, if people really did, um, oh, here's a question from Roseanne. Where did you get the silicone pans? Yeah, I actually found, um, Sir Latad carries these, so I, some of the shapes. So I have actually gotten, I have them in all the different shapes I've been able to find, but these loaf pans, I actually got from Amazon and they're really fun for making little meatloafs, you know, little lentil loaves like this instead of meatloafs. And they're fun for making muffins in the shape of little loaves and things like that as well. So yeah, these are, these are fun pans. Great. Well, thanks. And happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. You too, Chef AJ. Great to be with you. Thanks, Vicki. And speaking of family, we don't have one, not two, not three, not four, but five people for our next recipe. They are the Scott family all the way from Kentucky. They are known for their wonderful blog and YouTube channel called Get to the Root. Please welcome the Scots. Hi, guys. How are you? 
Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank you
your hands there. Okay. And we're going to pour it into our pan. I like lining it with the parchment because it makes it easy. Well, number one, it don't dry out and it uh, don't allow your cornbread to stick. And then it makes easy cleanup um, apples. All right, so we're going to just pour all of the batter into Let me turn this way so they can see the batter going in. Yes, thank you. All of that poured in. How many people are coming to your dinner tonight? It will be seven. Seven total. Yep, my sisters are here and they're going to be dining with us. And oh, this one out. And um, we just gonna have a feast. Yes, ma'am. Yep, they was over last night helping me cook all the desserts and everything. Then um, so that was fun. Well, tell yep. us, tell us your whole menu. Okay, you want to read the menu? <laughs> we're having a spread. So AJ, of course, we're gonna be having cornbread dressing. Some corn on the cob, collard greens, coconut collars, uh, stuffed pumpkin, what else? Um, mac and cheese, potato salad, green beans, candy yams, meatless oh loaf, uh, <laughs> kale and Brussels sprouts, Caesar salad. Oh my God. Yeah, for yeah. desserts, we're gonna have apple pie, sweet potato pie, chocolate sweet potato cake, uh, pumpkin cheesecake, chickpea bark, vanilla ice cream, and nutty ice cream for the kids. Okay, I think, oh, I think I some, and of course some gravy and cranberry sauce. Yes. I think I want to go to your house. <laughs> yes, I mean, ma'am. So here's my cornbread. We're going to cook this in the oven for, I believe it's 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think you yep. put in a reveal back there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kevin, for the reveal. And... For the veggie filling, I have in this pan already sauteed some onions, celery, mushrooms. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, celery, yeah, mushrooms. Sauteed in the pan, of course, no oil. Add a little bit of vegetable stock if your veggies begin to stick. And then about halfway through the cook time, I like to add garlic powder, uh, Miss Dash garlic and herb, crushed rosemary, thyme. Thyme, I always say thyme, but I think it's thyme, and some chipotle pepper. So I already have those veggies already sauteed and seasoned up. And can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then next, we're going to add some greens in. We're always all about adding greens to our meal. So this is some chopped kale. Add that in, and we're going to add some more flavor. And another one of my favorite salt-free spices is sumac. And um, I think you, you're familiar with sumac, right, Chef AJ? Yes, I love it. I, I do it. It's so good. It, it really is. So we're going to add some sumac in here. And then add, we're going to add a little bit more sugar. And that's date sugar, by the way. Okay. And a little bit of crushed red peppers. Now, if you don't like spiciness, um, you can leave the crushed red peppers out if you want. All right. And for some more wetness, we're going to add some vegetable stock, some rice vinegar, okay? And then we're going to add some liquid smoke. And this is hickory liquid, liquid smoke. I think that's about one tablespoon. And you basically just stir all of this together. And this is going to become what we like to say the veggie filling of the, of the dressing or the stuffing. Of course, we're not gonna stuff our dressing, so I guess it's dressing. So basically, you just wanna make sure everything is wet and incorporated, and then we're going to get our cornbread and break it up. We're gonna go pour this on top and cook it in the oven. Any questions, Chef AJ? Let me look, but I just wanna say, you know, for people that like, that think like the vegan diet or the SOS free diet is limiting. I mean, they eat like a white turkey with brown gravy and white mashed potatoes and white rolls. I mean, the food that you guys are making, it's like, it's unbelievable and it's colorful yeah. and it's delicious. Yeah, it's, it's no deprivation of living a plant-based lifestyle. It's just, a, it's a mindset, you know? Whereas, um, can you hand me the cornbread? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a mindset, Chef AJ. And 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 the options are like bountiful. It's like the sky is the limit. 
you know, eating plant-based food, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, so here we go. We have our cornbread. I'm just going to simply break it up into pieces. Mm -hmm. And it smells so good. I yes. wish you could smell this cornbread. Just yeah. oh, and you could just so, eat it as cornbread too. You could. You really could. Yep. I like seeing all the herbs and the spices in it, just like you do in the store when you buy the prepackaged stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it. We need to create smell of this. Yeah, we really yeah. do. You guys <laughs> need your own. You can know. You guys need your own cooking show on the Food Network. The Scott. Oh, family. thank you. Hey, <laughs> I'm believing in that one, Chef AJ. <laughs> yes, honey. I mean, if I had the power to give you guys a show, I would believe me. I know oh. you would. We appreciate you, Chef AJ. Well, That's you can have a show on my channel. You know, next year I'm going to programming. In other words, I don't. You know, I don't know if you got the email, but I'm I'm going to regular programming. Meaning, I'm not going to have a different guest every day. It's like I'm going to have one guest on the same day every month you know like oh wow yeah. that's amazing yeah well because you know it's been it's just been it's been you know getting getting guests it's like herding cats you know and I mean in other words it's it's difficult to coordinate a different guest 365 days a year so we're doing like McDougal Monday and you know mm -hmm. things like that so it's going to be not the same you know not every day but you know what I'm trying to say like the first I'm day saying yeah, so yeah. that's what it's going to be. But yeah, you guys should have a spot because people love watching you guys. Your kids are adorable and they love the food. They don't complain, do they, about mama's I, cooking? Oh, no, honey. They no. eat us out of a house and a home. They love, they enjoy their food. Yeah. And a lot of that is because I made food that they were used to eating when we were living a standard American um, diet. And I just make it plant-based. You know, we take out all the bad ingredients um, except for the meat, you know. And, and add all the good stuff in. And so there's no deprivation, living a plant-based lifestyle. All like right, this so Chef AJ, you see I've broken up my, my corn bread into little breadcrumbs. And we're gonna go ahead on and pour the greens and all the veggies over into the bowl. Mm -hmm. you see that? Let me turn it to the side so you can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can good. remember growing up, my uncle used to make, um, you know, the cornbread dressing and he would go with the sage sausage and all of that. And, you know, before I went plant-based, I thought it was all about the sausage that gave the cornbread dressing, but it really isn't. It's about the spices that we use that um, bring dishes to life. So um, I came up with this cornbread dressing and I used all the spices he would use and a few extra ones and just left out the meat. And that's saying you don't even miss it with the uh, mushrooms. No, you don't. I don't, you know, definitely don't miss all the, you know, sickness and everything that come along with it. Now I need a spoon. Like, a spoon I'm curious, you know, with uh, Destiny's an athlete, does her coach ever try to get her to eat meat or drink milk? That's a good question. No, no, they really don't. They sort of respect her lifestyle, you know, and um, they they never do, you know, and she always, you know, have her own food with her or. Or if she, you know, grabs something that's processes, you know, dairy free or whatever. But no, they, 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 they respect her lifestyle with the highest respect. Yeah. You know. So. As a matter of fact, Sir AJ, I think a lot of them are very surprised that she's um, nutritionally sound mm -hmm. at such a young age. You know, typically with most athletes, when they get older, they get pushed into programs because they are on these standard American diets that are totally unhealthy. Right. You know, even Usain Bolt and all these other athletes they understand that hey in order to have optimal performance you have to have an optimal diet, diet. well we like to have an optimal lifestyle, lifestyle. so right. much different that's right yep yep you know tracy's saying cornbread doesn't come out the same when using gluten-free flour i disagree i think it depends on the recipe i've been making cornbread with oats and cornmeal for years and yep. people don't it's complain yeah yep. right. it's right. amazing right. it really is yep yep Jiffy don't have no uh, competition here with this here. No, I don't miss it. I was a Jiffy queen, honey. I'm not knocking Jiffy if that's your thing. But now that I make my own cornbread, it's, it don't even compare. It don't. Compare. It don't. It really don't. I remember those Jiffy boxes like when I was little. They were like 29 cents, you know, yes. at the store. I, I just, I mean, they still sell Jiffy, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so here's our dressing and we're going to um, bake this in the oven at 350 for, I think it's 30 minutes covered. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, you know, some people like very moist um, dressing, 
And I just happen to be one of those people. And if you like it moist, then you're done. But if you want it to, to you know, be a little bit drier, then you just uncover it because we want to cover it and uncover it and let it cook an additional five minutes or so. And um, you got your dressing. So you want to cover it. And we're going to bake it in the oven for 30 minutes. And as far as I'm concerned, it's done at that point. And then you have the finished product. So I'm going to go in here. And can you see that, Chef AJ? Yum. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And it's some, it's absolutely amazing. And I'll be making some millet dressing to go with this, honey child. Yes. And some gravy. gravy. I'm sorry, millet gravy. <laughs> oh my God. You're gravy. you're what about a restaurant? Do you would you ever consider a restaurant? No, ma'am. Uh -uh. I'm <laughs> you already a run a restaurant, actually, in a way. I, yeah, well, yeah, but no, I'm I I'm all about sharing with people, teaching them, and then they get in their own kitchen and take charge of their own health. So I wish yeah, somebody yeah. would discover you. I wish some, I mean, because man, you guys, you just, I mean, what you're doing, you're doing it in the South. You're doing it with young children. You're doing it, raising an athlete. Why isn't somebody watching you? Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. In God's time, that's what I say. In the meantime, we're going to remain faithful and we're going to keep sharing the good news that you can live a healthy, vibrant, whole food, plant-based lifestyle as a family. That's right. That's what it's all about. And without compromising. That's right. That's right. Yes. And and it looks like Will's got a little bit of muscle on both <laughs> sides. From his <laughs> old age, you know, 62, 62. He's doing a little something, something. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Chef AJ. Yes. <laughs> it's all wow. about what we put in our mouth, though. Yep. Yes, so absolutely. <laughs> I love I love you guys so much. I miss you. I mean, that's the one thing about not doing Vegas. And, you know, we're doing a conference here in Sacramento, but it's, it's just a one day. But, man, it would be great to see you guys again. Yes, yes. ma'am. Well, we're going to make that happen real we soon. We are going to make it happen. AJ. Yes, I mean, we are. It's important. Have your kids been to Disneyland yet? No, no, they haven't. No, no. Nope. Because I mean, I, I was just going to say, like, what what else could you do in California? You know, like right. make, it, make it a worthwhile trip. Disneyland. I mean, what else we got here? You know, I mean, well, coming to see you will be worthwhile. Well, yeah. well, that's true. That's yeah. true. We could we could we could, <laughs> we could we could film a lot of shows. So, it, 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 any chance of a cookbook for you guys? It's in the works. I've had so many people to ask me, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's in the works, Chef AJ. I'm I'm just trying to decide like which recipes would I share, you know, because I have so many, and my breakfast bar is full of nothing but recipes I haven't even shared yet. So it's like, okay, what would I put in the book? Which ones? Because all of them are great, but. Yeah, maybe you can help me out with that, Chef AJ. I think all of them. Well, I'll I'll write the forward. So if people want to follow you, where's the best place? Facebook at Get to the Root Health and Wellness. Um, Instagram, it is Instagram, right? Instagram and on YouTube. And they're all Get to the Root. And that's Get, G-E-T, the number two, the letter D, Root, Health and Wellness. Yes. All right. Well, I wish you guys a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too, Chef AJ. Thank you for having us. Uh, anytime. You really come back anytime. People love you. I love you. And I love your food. I mean, I haven't, ta I mean, I haven't tasted it, but your recipes are, I haven't tasted it when you've made it. I've tasted it when right. I've made it. What is right. your most popular recipe on your blog? Wow. You know what? That's a good question. I've been so busy just getting them up there. I haven't even really looked to see which one is the, uh, most favorite. I know the mac and cheese, the lentil loaf, um, the sweet potato uh, yam sundae. That's one a lot of people talk about. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do the research on that, Chef AJ, and find out. Yeah. Well, Angela, who's a fitness guru herself, says that your Saturday morning fitness show is excellent. Oh, oh thank you, Angela. Angela is my hero. I tell yes. you, my girl gonna be just like her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Angela. So well, thank you, Scott family, and enjoy your Thanksgiving. Yes, thank you, you too. Take care. Take care. All right. Take care. And we have two more courses. Now we have another extraordinary SOS free chef. Her name is Kara Levy from the Veggie Vanguard, and she's going to be making red cabbage steaks with Duca. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Hi, Chef AJ. Can you hear me okay? I can. I love what you're wearing. Is it an apron? 
It's an apron, actually, and it has my logo on it, so I'm very proud of it, the Veggie Vanguard. So it's so nice to see you, and thank you for inviting me for, I think, our third Thanksgiving together like this. And I'm very excited about being here, and everyone's made such yummy food already. I know. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we were all together and connected? Oh, my God. It would be awesome. And I I love that they mentioned I love cornbread so much. And it's so easy to cook, gluten-free, no butter, no sugar. And, you know, just have to be open to, you know, uh, trying to just figure it out. So I'm excited about what I'm showing you today. And it might be life changing. So I just want to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> are you, are you home? Because you, it looks like you're in a different place, but it's. No, I'm home. not home. I'm the same place I've been for the year and a half. You know, I, I live in New Mexico now. I used to live in New York and this is my kitchen, my home. And it's um something I love very much. And I work a lot out of the kitchen. In fact, today I'm taking the day off for Thanksgiving. I I'm actually going to go to the movies. <laughs> and what are you going to see? I'm going to see a movie about food. <laughs> what, what's it called? It's called Menu. <laughs> I, Menu. Haven't, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, so I'm taking the day off from cooking, but I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you and all your guests. So um, I'm going to get started so that we don't lose track of time. And I'm making cabbage, today red cabbage, but it could be red or green cabbage. But the part that's exciting about what I'm making is a spice, a condiment from the Middle East called duka. And I'll just spell that for you. It's D-U-K-K-A-H. And it has other spellings. Um, and it is a condiment that, like I said, is found in the Middle East. It's made up of uh, nuts and seeds and herbs and and pretty much that's it. There's lots of kinds of dukkha. Today we're going to focus on making a pumpkin seed dukkha. Uh, about 10 years ago when I was still, uh, I was just a vegetarian then, and Martha Rose Schulman at the New York Times wrote an amazing article giving um, about six or seven dukkha recipes. And I started making one of those and I loved it so much. And I started giving it out as gifts, actually. People loved it so much that I would just make the spice. And to this day, people still ask me for, can you please make me some dukkha? I'm out of dukkha. Um, and dukkha can um, normally gets eaten in the Middle East on flatbreads, but we can eat it on anything we want, actually. We can eat it on potatoes, on rice, on salads. So I'm gonna show you that and then we're gonna Cook, put dukkha onto cabbage and roast and make cabbage steaks. So that's what we're doing. So to get started, I've done a little bit of prep ahead, but I'm going to get a skillet on the burner and we need to roast our uh, seeds and nuts. So the very first thing, and I've done a lot of the work ahead, but I just want to tell you that you want to get your pan hot. I just have an ordinary skillet here. And you're going to start with a half a cup of pumpkin seeds. And you're going to get those in the pan. And you're just going to wait. Usually you can hear that one, they'll pop. Um, and you don't really want to walk away when you're toasting seeds because one minute they're um, not done and the, you turn around and then they're almost burning. So you do want to stick to the stove when you're cooking and roasting uh, any kinds of seeds. So while those are cooking, I'm just going to show you exactly what we have here in the tray. Uh, we have a half a cup of pumpkin seeds and all of this is already roasted. And then we have two tablespoons of sesame seeds. We have uh, two tablespoons of coriander and coriander is a little round seed. Uh, sometimes people ask me, is it the same as the coriander leaf? Well, it is, only this is the seed form, and it's just not, it's coriander we know as a herb, right? A fresh herb, but this is coriander as a seed. And then we have one tablespoon of cumin seed. So I've already roasted all this, but I just am showing you over on here on the side what, what roasting of the seeds are like. So that's going to cook while we're going to start to grind up these seeds. Uh, and I'm using uh, what is a dedicated spice grinder for me. Some people would call it a coffee grinder. It is a coffee grinder technically, but I only use this for spices. And I clean it out very well each time. And it's something that I've had for 
ever. I can't imagine. Uh, if you don't own a spice grinder or a coffee grinder, surely you could grind your nuts with a mortar and pestle if you had that, or you could use any kind of blender to grind up. But this is the most convenient. So while we're talking, I'm just going to get myself a bowl. Ah, I heard the very first pop. And let me just get a little um, spoon because when you hear that first pop, you know that the pan is hot and you don't want the sesame, the pumpkin seeds to get too brown. Uh, and also one of the things we need to do is a half a cup of the seeds, we're gonna take a quarter cup out. We're only gonna grind the powder of a quarter cup. So these are gonna remain whole in the, in, in the final uh, spice of pita. So that is a quarter cup right there. And then what we're gonna do is take the grinder and we're gonna pour these seeds very carefully into here. It doesn't matter if they start to get mixed up because they're all gonna get mixed up ultimately. And we're gonna grind. It's just gonna take a few pushes like that. And then after it's ground just like that, you just pour that right into the bowl. Okay, and I'm hearing this popping and we just want to make sure uh, these are starting to get brown. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to take these out, but I just wanted you to see what it's like to pop the nuts. Okay, so this is now going to go away from here. So we have some room and we're going to just finish grinding. And again, we're making the duca condiment for our cabbage steaks. And, and take about three uh, proportions of put, putting this in. And we're gonna finish off this condiment with two very special spices. Um, I super loved, um, and you don't wanna go in there with your finger when it's all stuck to the side. You don't, I have a little paintbrush that I keep with my, my measuring spoons, and it's just a little brush that actually I go in here and clean out. And I get, because if you grind it a lot, like any kind of nut, it wants to almost kind of, the, the natural oils start to come out and it wants to almost stick. So you don't want to over grind. You just want to grind just enough. Okay, so that is the last of that. And again, Nuka, when I made it 10 years ago, um, the recipe actually had salt in it. And I kind of stopped making it when I became vegan SOS. I thought, oh, I just shouldn't have that spice. And then I thought to myself, does it really need the salt? You know, and so I started making it again. And I thought, this doesn't even, you don't even know that the salt is missing. So uh, I think it's a quite good. And um, like I said, the Duca can also be found pre-made. I know that um, I don't I don't have a Trader Joe's where I live, but I do know that they used to carry it in their spice section. So you could buy it and don't have to make it. But as you can see, once you make it, you will be always wanting to make it because not only does it smell so amazing, and I'm just gonna get this unplugged here for a minute and just get the last out just like that. So that is almost done. That's empty brushes here. We're just gonna move this right over here. And the last two ingredients that go in here to finish this off are two very unusual spices. And when a previous guest um, just asked you if you knew what sumac was, I was so excited to hear you, you know, you know what sumac was because it's one of my favorites. And there are some other spices that are, are Middle Eastern, and one of them is called Aleppo pepper, <laughs> and the other one is called nigella seeds. And those are two ingredients that you can easily find at a Middle Eastern store. Um, if you didn't have these two things, um, you could use chili, mild chili powder instead of the Aleppo. And nigella seeds are often called black cumin seeds. So, um, but if you didn't have these two things, again, I would just replace the El Pepo with Aleppo with uh, chili powder. Um, but we're going to use, I'm going to use a nice big heaping teaspoon of it because it's a little hot, just a little bit, not too much, and quite tangy. And uh, 
adds a real punch to this. And then these are our nigella seeds and we only need to have one teaspoon of each of those seeds to finish off this dish to the condiment. So this condiment can last a number of weeks, um, maybe even months. I always, I just store it in a, in a jar, an, an airtight jar, and then I put it away in the cabinet with the rest of my spices. And you know, never to store your spices near a hot oven because it's not good. And some spices can last a number of years actually, but you just have to, you know, it's best to keep them in the dark and keep them cool. So this is now our duca condiment. Okay, and you could use this on everything <laughs> that you eat. Um, we could just stop here and say, "This is it. <laughs> this is this is the this is the demo making duca." And as I say, life changing. It's a great gift to give out for the holidays or any time. Um, I usually often will just give it in a nice jar and label it and give it as a gift. So that is the duca. So let's now, um, we don't need to taste it because we know it's delicious already. It's got the nuts and the spices and it's going to be out of this world. So the next thing we wanna do is have a cabbage. And I try to buy the smaller cabbages, not the ones that are like, like bigger than your own head because they're more tender and they're just easier to manage. Uh, and you could use a red or green, it doesn't matter. Um, today we're gonna use a red. And I usually take off the outer leaves. The, if they're dark, I just get rid of the outer leaves like this and we just kept but this one pretty much is pretty clean and then I always wash it so so you know it's something I just do because I don't know brought it home from the store and I get it patted dry and we're gonna make steaks and let me get the pan and we're gonna cook these steaks in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes and I'm gonna set the, the oven would be set at 400 or 425 degrees. That's the temperature that you use for roasting vegetables. So what I'm gonna do is cut these steaks and this is a little bit wobbly, but we need the core to stay in. Um, you could cut it all the way in half if you want, but this is a relatively small cabbage. So I'm gonna cut the end here and this actually is good. I would just put this, I'm going to cut the little end so it's not so wobbly. And I'm just going to literally put it on my sheet pan like that. So I'm going to cut these steaks so that they're about a half an inch thick. And ultimately, I'm keeping the center core in. The center core actually helps keep the cabbage steak um together, right? And it doesn't matter. This one I see, I cut a little fatter on this end and smaller on that end. It doesn't matter, like I said, and, and you wanna be very careful so that it doesn't wobble, right? And I think it's very beautiful if you have green and red. And as I said, we're going to keep these all centered and we're keeping the core in, okay? So normally if you were making uh, I love that Chef Ramsay has coleslaw at his Thanksgiving Chef AJ. Do you know every year when I was married, I had to have coleslaw at my table for Thanksgiving. And my husband's uh, family was from Yugoslavia. So they loved coleslaw. So I thought it was really interesting that actually inadvertently he made that he made coleslaw and now he has to be responsible for bringing that to the table for Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> I right. laughed, I thought to myself, all the years I made things, all the years I made um, uh, coleslaw and had to make it for, so that is our cabbage steaks, right? We can finish here and finish the whole cabbage if you want, let's just do that. Okay, so let's say that's all nice. And I like the, I don't like it rolling around. So I always cut the ends so they're flat. So normally people would say, well, we're gonna roast vegetables. We're gonna douse it with oil. Well, we don't do that in our SOS free lifestyle here, do we? So we're going to 
figure out what is the best way to roast vegetables uh, in the oven. And as Ramsey said, you can just put the asparagus right in the oven and they're going to cook. Wow, what a brilliant idea. But I use one of two things roasting vegetables. The first thing that I often do is I use a citrus. Today, we're going to use lime juice. You could use lemon juice. You could use orange juice. It's delicious, actually, on the cabbage. Um, but today we're using lime. And the other thing that I do sometimes when I'm roasting vegetables, if I don't want a citrusy flavor, I'll use the bean juice out of the chickpeas or the cannellini beans. That's called aquafaba. And then I'll brush that on or I'll lightly toss the vegetables. And I always put it on a piece of parchment or if you have a silicone mat, because you never want to have to clean up the sheet pan. Uh, so you want to protect your sheet pan with a piece of parchment paper. So today I'm using lime juice and I've already uh, made the lime juice. I often make it uh, very much like I think Shada said she just comes home and squeezes all the limes. I actually always have squeezed lime juice in or lemon juice or orange. I have citrus always squeezed in the fridge. So I'm just generously pouring this on. And this is going to be our moisture for and flavor for our cabbage steaks, right? Just like this, just pouring this on. And then I'm going to take uh, the spice that we just made. And I'm gonna liberally sprinkle it. Now you see there's some whole pumpkin seeds. Remember we left a quarter cup whole. We didn't grind up everything. And this is so, I, I wish that you could smell this because just sprinkling it, I mean, just cooking all these seeds, roasting them just makes your kitchen smell out of this world. And this is the holiday time when we're using a lot of, of, of different kinds of spices. So that is how these would look just like this. And they'll go into the hot oven. It can be 400 or 425, either one. And I'm just going to put them in the oven and they would cook for 15 to 20 minutes. But I have already, just for time's sake, I have cooked some already. And I actually had some green cabbage um, in my fridge. So I cut those and I had some other red cabbage that wasn't actually whole steaks. So, so they're kind of more like three quarters because I had already cut into my cabbage. So let me just move this so we can plate this. And this is a really nice side dish. And like I said, the so we're just gonna, this is what this looks like, Chef AJ. A nice steak of cabbage <laughs> with this incredible duca. The edges here are a little crispy and brown. And if I were just to peel this away, like literally like this very second, like eat it. This is so sweet and so delicious. It is out of this world, this cabbage. You, you, wouldn't, you couldn't even imagine it. So how I would plate this is, if you do get the little bit of green and a little bit of red, I like alternating so that you would have on the platter, you would have a green one. And you see sometimes the edges come with you and you would have a red one, right? And you would just, and here I don't have another green one, but I have another red one. So let's just maybe put that under here. And then you would just serve that and these little bits that fall off are for the cook. Um, and, and this is our red cabbage with duca spice. And it's a condiment. And again, we made it fresh from sesame seeds and cumin and, you know, all the things that are actually nuts and seeds uh, are very good for you. They're full of good fats and some uh, even claim some some seeds even claim that they can help arthritis and they can help with cancer and having small portions of nuts and seeds actually are very good for you. And that is the demo for Thanksgiving, Chef AJ. Wow, that was amazing. And, and you don't even have to wait for Thanksgiving to make this recipe. I think it'd be good any time of year. 
I think you and you could do it on anything. Like imagine cutting Brussels sprouts, right? And just cut, tossing those with some citrus and putting this spice and then putting it in the oven. And like I said, this spice is mainly a, a condiment that people in the Middle East would put on flatbread. I'm sure they drizzle olive oil on it too, but it is it is so good on its own and can be eaten on anything that I promise you that it is a life-changing spice. <laughs> um, there's a question. How do you keep your fiddle leaf fern so healthy? My fiddle leaf what? Your fiddle oh, my fern, my, my plant in the back. I, I, I don't know. It's just, you know what? I, I didn't even know. I used to think that I killed every plant. But somehow I, I moved to New Mexico with the aim of having a vegetable garden because in Manhattan I had no no space, no nothing, and now I have a yard. Um, right now it's covered in snow, but but because I'm in the mountains and it's very very cold today, AJ. It's 35 degrees. So, but somehow I managed to uh, transform my hands uh, into a green thumb, and and I've been able to successfully grow plants as well as uh, vegetables. And I, maybe it's just the sun <laughs> is, is, what, is what I always, and the soil, of course, and the good soil, because I never could, I never could claim that I had a green thumb before in my life. Right. So if you think you're not a good person, you know, a person that kills plants, don't, it maybe doesn't last for a lifetime. <laughs> Are you going to have anything else with your meal? Um, I am, you know, having, I have some soup that I made. I had so, you wouldn't believe how many thousands of tomatoes I had from summer. <laughs> and I made 12 jars of, of, I put away almost all my tomatoes for the winter. And so I made a wonderful tomato soup. And so I'll probably have soup and probably a side like this. And I'm not sure about dessert. I, I'm kind of deserted out at the moment. So, um, but as, like I said, I'm, I'm going to the movies today. So um, I'm taking the day off from cooking. I cook almost every day. So I decided wow. Thanksgiving's a day off for me. <laughs> you cook for other people? I cook for a lot of other people. And I actually, and I, I, I am all the time teaching. And, and uh, as you know, I, I'm the culinary educator at Plant Powered Metro New York. And so I have a once a month demo that I do. And I teach at the University of New Mexico at Taos and I work full time. So I'm always in the kitchen. Oh, always, so always. When, when are you going to put out a cookbook? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, AJ, I don't like writing things down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is the hardest thing in the world for me. I don't yeah. mind sharing. I don't, I love teaching so much, but the writing of things down is, is a real um, discipline for me and, and hard to do. Um, maybe it's hard for you too. I don't know. I, I, I don't really cook, cook with recipes. So it's always been a challenge for me. These people that write like 20 books, I'm like, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, you just need someone by your side, just taking notes, you know, like I just once or putting it into a microphone. I just added some some of this and just, and I always say about recipes, they're like a shopping list, right? <laughs> That's what recipes are for me. Like if you need to have a guide, you need to have a guide to go get the groceries and you need to have a guide on approximately what, what proportions to use. But ultimately it's up to you. <laughs> And it's up to you. And it's a template. <laughs> the recipe is a template. You and I could have the exact same recipe and turn out a totally different dish, practically. So it's a guide is what a recipe is. And it's not the Bible. <laughs> it's just a guide. <laughs> and I always try to encourage people to um, uh, use it, but stray away from it uh, and use their own intuition and their own learning and make their own mistakes. Um, because it's the only way you learn in the kitchen is to make mistakes. <laughs> There's no one right way. <laughs> and I had, had to teach myself. Uh, I was a vegetarian for 25 years. And when I became a vegan, I immediately went SOS free. And I've had to relearn. And, and um, 
I feel like the world is uh, open up. It, there's so many things to eat. Uh, people say, oh, you're vegan and you don't eat sugar, oil, and salt. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? Like, I know. It's, it's I, just... I, I, like, I eat so much more than I ever ate. That's the super crazy thing. Quantity wise and variety wise. You know, <laughs> it never feels limiting. Yeah, people think we're from another planet, but whatever. You know, oh, I like he, Dr. I, Barnard. He always says we're not from planet Vegas. You know, like that's what Dr. But Barnard I mean, if if, he, if we could have just you know had all this food that everyone was making today, and people could taste it, they would know how great it is. So, Carol, if people want to follow you somewhere other than to your kitchen and eat your food, <laughs> where can they? <laughs> hey, I would love, you know, that's my favorite thing. It's funny that I'm not having a Thanksgiving. I love more than anything. Sometimes I dream, AJ, of just opening the door and saying, I'm here from 12 to 2 and come now. Come now is just sit at the counter, eat with me while I'm cleaning up or, you know, and we'll chat and just leave a few bucks in a little jar. When you exit, that will pay for the food and the washing up. And <laughs> that's kind of always my dream is just people sitting down at my counter and just kind of hanging out. Thank so, uh, but they can, reach, they can reach me at Instagram when they're not in my kitchen. I love posting. I'm the veggie vanguard at Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, so they can find me there. And you can find me once a month on Plant Powered Metro New York. We uh, have, de I have a demo. My next demo is December 13th. Um, and we're, I don't know what we're doing yet, but, and we're having a big plant-a-thon on Tuesday, celebrating an all-day plant-a-thon um, where we're having big guests, Chef AJ, and like uh, the Esselsteins are coming and, and Dr. Ron Weiss is coming. There a whole day of just plant-a-thon things and try to raise money for our organization because we're out there in the community trying to change and empower people, uh, their lives to eat healthy food. And that's, um, even though I'm not in New York anymore, I'm still a big part of that organization. Oh, well, that's great. Well, thank you for the work you do for them and for everyone for creating such delicious recipes. And thank you for having me on. And I look forward to um, seeing you and uh, in person one day and you take care of yourself and have a great holiday. And uh, thank you for inviting me to Thanksgiving. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving and enjoy the show. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. All right, guys, we have one more recipe left. No Thanksgiving cook along, SOS free or not, would be complete without dessert. So we have one more chef. She needs no introduction because she's me. I was the executive pastry chef at Sante Restaurant for five years where I made not only vegan desserts, but all my desserts were gluten-free, free of sugar, oil, salt, and most of them were free of flour. So today I am going to demonstrate for you my famous caramel nut tort. It's with very simple ingredients. I think only four or five. You might have them in your house right now with the exception of vanilla powder. You can get them pretty much at any grocery store. This was an exclusive recipe to the students of my sweet indulgence dessert masterclass, but people went crazy for it when I posted it on social media. So I decided to share it with you. If you're interested in my master classes, please sign up at chefaj.com. So if we offer the class again, you'll be notified. These are very limited classes because we cook together and I have to be able to see you on Zoom. So without further ado, let me introduce Chef AJ and the caramel nut tort. Let's see, I got to share my screen. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not so great at screen share. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to show you how to make a caramel nut tort. It is such a delicious recipe. It really was only available to people who put my sweet indulgence master dessert class. But I posted on social media, everyone back to the recipe. So here it is. This is what we serve for our Thanksgiving dinner. And you're going to need a springform pan. And you can get these in metal. You can get these in silicone. Just any kind can do. It's the kind where you can open it up and then often use for cheesecake. So this is the best pan I can use for this dessert. What you can do to make cleanup easier and also to make it easier to transfer to another dish when serving is to take a piece of either wax paper or parchment paper and put it on the bottom. You don't have to do this, but it does help. Close the ring. 
So that's how we set our plan. So the first thing we're going to do is make our cloth. You're going to need a food processor. It's fitted with the S blade, a dry food processor. When you're using things like nuts or grains, you want to make sure you just haven't used it for something wet or it'll get all mushy, be like a pesto instead of a flour like consistency. So we're going to take everything is, is done in ounces. I used to be a restaurant pastry chef. Cups are not accurate. So I do everything in ounces. So get an inexpensive food scale at less than $15. At Bed Bath and Beyond, you can use a coupon. You can also use it for postage. So we have 12 ounces of raw unsalted cashews, a teaspoon of vanilla powder. We do not have a preference of brands for vanilla powder. I would say get the best that you can afford and the biggest size. The price is very day by day on Amazon. You just want to get a pure one that's just vanilla bean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to process this into a flour-like consistency. Just a few seconds. You can see it's kind of like breadcrumbs. It doesn't have to be super finely ground. As a matter of fact, if you keep going, it will turn into a nut butter, which we don't want. And then I have 12 ounces of dates. Really important, you learn the hard way, that when you put them in your food processor, either squeeze each one individually, and even when I've done that, I've had a pit, or cut them in half beforehand, because when you get a pit, it can damage your blade. Sometimes they're sneaky. Sometimes they're so small that you don't see them. Even though it says pitted dates, trust me, very often there is a pit. I'm using the Deadwood More dates. They're a little bit drier and less sweet, but they're also a lot more cost effective when you're using a lot of them than the Medjool. If you were just going to use dates for eating, there are other brands that, or not brands, but varieties you might like better, like the Collis or the Bari or the Medjool. But for dessert recipes, really we're using dates just for their neutral sweetness. So I tend to go with the Deadwood More because you can get great prices. Talk to us, see? A pit, that's why we do that. Because when I don't, I can guarantee there is one. And you'll know right away when there's a pit because the food processor will either slow down or stop. So now what we're going to do is process this into almost a ball. So now the batter that did that shows me that there's probably a pit, even though you saw me check all of you. How is it possible? See, a pit, even though. I hand squoze, if that's a word. So, so when it starts to slow down, you want to check it by opening the food processor, taking a little bit of it, squeezing it together, see if you can form a ball easily and break the ball in half. And if no crumbles, that's called the break point. The crust is ready. And you're going to pour it into your pan. And then just using your palm, your fingertips, just press it down. This itself is just a delicious cookie in itself. And it could be a raw dessert, raw cookie, either eaten raw, rolled in the ball, or dehydrated. It's a cashew cookie. The vanilla powder really takes it to the next level. Don't skimp on vanilla powder. Vanilla extract is basically watered down vanilla flavoring that either contains sugar or alcohol. I would rather use no vanilla than, you know, use an extract. Once you have vanilla powder, you'll agree with me, I'm sure. If not, refer to the video with Chef Ron of Sun Cafe where he talks about how his most popular dessert, the kale shake, has $1 worth of vanilla powder in it. There is no comparison. I get nothing for saying this. I have no stock in vanilla bean. It's just that good. There we have our beautiful crust right there. And now we make the filling. This is so easy to make. You can almost make it at the last minute if you had the ingredients. So now we're going to make our date paste. I have one pound of pitted dates that I did squeeze each one. So hopefully they won't surprise me with a pit that's soaked in water. You never want to throw away the soap water for dates. That's where all the sweetness is now. So never soak, throw that away. When you soak nuts and seeds, that's different. You want to throw that pungent, cloudy water away, but not from soaking dates. If you don't have time to soak the dates for several hours or overnight, you can soak them in boiling water. And you place them in your food processor with the S blade. Normally when I make date paste, it's one pound of dates to eight ounces of water. But for this particular recipe, I've done the water. Now I'm gonna process. What's it going on? So once it's nice and smooth, I'm going to add 12 ounces of almond meal. What almond meal is, is simply almonds, raw almonds that are unsalted, that have been ground up into a powder. If you can't find it, 
It's available in most places for sure, Trader Joe's. You can take raw almonds and grind them yourself. There's also a teaspoon of vanilla powder, and now I'm going to process. That's our filling. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a Neiman Marcus bar, but my friend Kevin says that this pie reminds him of that. So I'm guessing that's a good bar that they sold. It's decadent and delicious. What's really cool about this dessert, other than it takes really no time at all to make, is it's not only vegan, but it's whole foods, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, refined sugar-free, and of course, you know, salt or oil or flour. Now, there's a lot of batter that's left on the plate. That's the way to get that off easily is to put it back down on the base. Pulse for just a second. You can see the blade is completely clear now. So I get the last bit out. Now this does not need to be cooked because it's a raw dessert. However, it does need to set up in the freezer several hours, preferably overnight. So I'm gonna have to come back and show you what it looks like when it's done, but at least you'll know how to make it now. Find the easiest way to smooth the top. Any dessert is with something called an offset spatula. It's just a little bit easier than using a spoon, spatula, or a knife because of the double aspect. We're just gonna spread this. It smells so good. And once it's smooth, we are going to top it with eight ounces of chopped walnuts. I hope I had the ratio right. I'll have it below. It was eight ounces of cashews, 12 ounces of almond meal, eight ounces of walnuts. So we're just going to sprinkle this over the top evenly. These are chopped, raw, and unsalted. Spread them out. Press it down. All covered. And then you take date syrup. I recommend the organic I Love Date Lady. I can get you a discount code below, but I've tried other brands. This just tastes the best to me. And you don't have to measure, but if you needed a measurement, I would guess it's two tablespoons. And you just squirt it over the top. This is going to spread out in the freezer. Just wanna, this gives it that glazed look. And so good. You'll see when it's all frozen, you won't see the lines. It looks like I'm doing a lot, but I promise you it's doing more than about two tablespoons because it comes out in a very fine line. See, that really took no time at all to make. Many of these ingredients you already have on hand, and if you don't, with the exception of vanilla powder, they're really available at any supermarket. So there you have the caramel pork. I'm going to pop it in the freezer, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's set up. So it's been about four hours. Realize that everybody's freezer is different depending on where you put it in the freezer. Ideally, you do want to freeze this overnight. This is a dessert that has to stay in the freezer, and I'll show you the best ways to store it. So what you're going to do is you just open the ring, carefully lift it off. You can see by putting this piece of parchment paper, you don't have to wash this. It's clean. Now, when I recommend for storage, depending on how much room is in your freezer, is either a good piece of Tupperware that is meant for the freezer, this will fit perfectly, or if you don't have a lot of room in your freezer, you get a jumbo hefty or Ziploc bag. You can write the date, the name of, on it, and these also work great. You can also slice it in advance and then freeze it sliced if you prefer. But since this is for the holiday, what we're going to do is find our prettiest platter. Mine is Talavera from Mexico. And speaking of Mexico, if you ever like to join me for the ultimate Rancho La Puerta experience, email help at chefaj.com because we're putting groups together for 2023 where we can all go together and you'll get a discounted weight. So what I like to do is then just easily take the parchment paper away. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? And then place it on the platter. And then you have a beautiful caramel nut torte for the holidays or any time. Okay. Bailey and I would like to wish you and your family a very happy, healthy holiday season. Take care, everyone. So I'm going to show you how to. All right. Well, that's the show, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you'll make some of these recipes, if not for Thanksgiving, then some other time. And why can't I find, there we go. I lost the chat. There we go. Just seeing if there's any questions or comments before I say goodbye.
I hope you enjoyed everything. Uh, you love the platter. Well, then come to Mexico and get them. I have lots of Talavara. Should you buy vanilla powder that's brown or white? Never buy the white. It's processed and it has sugar. Only buy the brown. Only buy vanilla powder that has one ingredient, vanilla. There's many in my Amazon store, but you can buy any brand you want. I just shop whichever one is on sale at the time. It's very expensive. It's the second most expensive spice in the world after saffron, but it's so worth it. I would rather not use extract. I'd rather than than I'd rather use nothing than use extract. Extract is just watered down. It's got alcohol. It's got sugar. Use the pure or use nothing, in my opinion. But you know, especially for desserts. And let's see if there's any other questions. Oh, um, Marion says it's fantastic. Thank you. Lots of thank you. Lots of happy Thanksgiving. What is the name of my pan? Ask Babette. It's just called a spring form pan. Gina says uh, uh, this, uh, this is our third Thanksgiving together and the best. Yes, I really enjoy these multi-chef shows. How do you find last year's Christmas? Well, you, if you mean the Christmas show, I don't know if we're having a Christmas show. This uh, Yes, we are having a Christmas show. It's not a cook-along. And you... Uh, and you just go to my YouTube channel. There's a little magnifying glasses. You can do a search. How do you cut the tortin wedges? So I just take a very sharp knife and I just cut it in half and then in half. And then usually I can get, I can easily get 16 out of it, but you know, you can cut them bigger as well. So that's it. I hope you guys will try the recipes. I hope you have a happy, healthy Thanksgiving. Please know that you can come back tomorrow. We're hopefully going to have three shows. I can't guarantee it. I've been a little bit under the weather, but we are going to at least have our nine o'clock show with Glenn Mercer, who is the co-author of my books, as well as many books by himself. And at 11 o'clock, we're going to have Carolyn Chen with her Black Friday special. And I'm not sure about the one o'clock show. I haven't heard from Holland Bowl Mill, but we've got lots of holiday specials because we want you to support small businesses for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be starting nine o'clock for the next three days because we've got about 14 small businesses, some of who you're familiar with, some of who you aren't. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving day. Can you make your own vanilla powder from pods? Don't know about that. Um, honestly, I don't know. You could Google that. You can make vanilla water, but I don't know. I just know that when you buy vanilla beans, it's much more expensive than buying vanilla powder. Uh, my spring form pan was, gosh, it was either nine inches or 10 inches, but you could use any size, eight, nine, or 10. Just know that the bigger the pan, you know, the flatter it's going to be. But I, I I would have to go measure it and then I'd have to leave here to go there. I believe it was 10, but it could have been nine, but it definitely wasn't eight and it wasn't 11. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. And I hope to see you tomorrow. And again, happy and healthy Thanksgiving to you and all your loved ones and your furry friends as well. Thanks again for watching Chef AJ Live. If you like what you see, please share and subscribe and consider signing up for my mailing list at Chef